Mentoring in Football Manager is one of the most underused and misunderstood aspects of the game by a huge bunch of FM players and it's something that can be extremely beneficial for your players particularly the younger ones in your saves if done correctly but the key word there is if done correctly because if you do certain things wrong with mentoring you can actually make things worse than before that player was being mentored so today I'll cover the basics of mentoring how to set it up as well as some in-depth tips and some myths about mentoring that you might be believing that actually aren't true but before we get into that I'd like to ask you guys to smash the like button if you enjoy and to subscribe for more content like this. Let me know if you have any questions at all about mentoring in the comments down below and I'll do my best to help. But the reason this video has came about is in a lot of my Wonder Kid to Superstar episodes, I set up mentoring groups for my players and people say, what is mentoring? How do you do it? How does it work? Mentoring is where you try to take the personality, some attributes and some traits of a player and have them pass them down to usually younger players or players of less importance. Imagine you're a new centre back at Chelsea and on your first day Thiago Silva brings you into a room and he's going to be your wingman during your whole time at Chelsea. He's going to teach you everything that he knows. It's obviously going to help your game right and that's kind of what we're doing in Football Manager except instead of being that one-to-one -one relationship it's a group setting so Thiago Silva might have three young players that have came through in his mentoring group that he is trying to pass knowledge and aspects of his game onto so that's something that you can do in Football Manager the same way that it would work in real life. I'm using Chelsea because they've got some good mentors but also some new players that they have signed particularly some young players and I'm going to move them all into the first team and only when they are in your first team will you actually be able to see them as a possible person for a mentoring group. So we've added Madaweke, I've added Lewis Hall, Badi Ashiel, there's also a bunch of other young players in this team if we sort by age you've got Broya, even Mudrik potentially might be someone that we can still mentor. I'll keep boosting some extra players in there, let's take that Trophy for Fana as well and also Andre Santos that way we can make sure we've got some players to choose from and to get to mentoring you're going to go to the training screen and to the mentoring tab but before we get there I want to point out the fact that if you go to responsibilities and training if you do delegate your training onto someone else say your assistant manager which I know a lot of people do that doesn't actually affect mentoring it seems mentoring is something you have to do manually so let's go to it you go to the training tab and then believe it or not to the mentoring tab now once on here you have two options you can either start to create all your groups yourself or if you don't want to do that you can go ahead and ask the assistant to make those mentoring groups for you and this is where my first myth slash tip is going to come in a lot of people will assume doing this will give you the best mentoring groups possible it's not always the case it certainly helps if you don't want to do it manually but you should definitely take a look at what the assistant has done because they might actually be doing something that you don't want to see with your team so let's take a look at some of the examples here there's a mentor Mentoring group here that I'm not necessarily sure I agree with. Ruben Loftus Cheek mentoring Lewis Hall, which isn't terrible, but also Enzo Fernandez. I'm not super sure about that one, so I might tweak it myself. But let me go all the way back to basics and I'll show you what we're looking for when we're making a mentoring group. So, in theory, usually what you have when you create a group, let's call it Tiago Silva, is you'll have one mentor and a few younger players being mentored by that player. Now, you can technically have two mentors in a group, there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not sure how much of a positive impact it actually has so for the sake of this video we're going to stick to one mentor per group usually it will be your older players or your players with better personalities who would be good mentors in this case I'm going to take Thiago Silva who has the leader personality as our first mentor in this group in the group with him I'm going to add Benoit Badia-Shiel we'll take him into that group Lewis Hall also plays a fairly similar position so I'll put him in that group and we're also going to put let's say Andre Santos into that group. That might seem like a weird one at first because you might think they don't play the same position but don't worry they don't necessarily have to play the same position as their mentors to get benefits from the mentoring because there's a few things that mentoring can affect and we'll cover those in a second but let's break down the information you can see here. You've got the hierarchy of those players. The best thing tends to be to have someone who is a team leader or a highly influential player mentoring your players and if you want to see them you can go to the dynamics tab and to hierarchy and get an idea of who the more experienced team leaders are at the club these will be your best options as mentors other than those some of the players in the highly influential section can also be good mentors but 
we'll use Aspilicueta, Thiago Silva, and Kante as our mentors today. The next section is the social group section. And what this is, again, it's going to be on your dynamic screen, your social groups. You would want in an ideal world for all of your players to be part of the same core social group, but often that won't be the case. You can see here our secondary social group is of players that are of a similar age and have been brought to the club at a similar time. And we've also got the secondary social group B here, which is other players that have been brought in recently and our others section. And unfortunately, our three team leaders are in the others section and we prefer them to be in the core social group. And I won't really cover social groups too much more from this point, but to let you know, if you had a mentor from this core social group, let's say Ruben Loftus-Cheek here, and he was mentoring Andre Santos in the secondary social group, the longer that they're in that mentoring group, Group together, the more chance there is that Andre Santos will become part of that mentoring group with Ruben Loftus Cheek and join this core social group. It would happen probably over the season anyway, the more you played Andre Santos, but if you were doing the mentoring, it would likely speed up the process. So bear that in mind. But mentoring in general is a very slow process and you should not expect instant results from it. But what results can you get? The first thing that can be affected by mentoring are two specific attributes determination and leadership. If you have a player with higher determination, or a higher leadership ability than someone that they're mentoring, Tate Thiago Silva and Lewis Hall. Over time, during this mentoring, there's a chance, and it's only a chance, it's not guaranteed, but there's a chance Lewis Hall will gain some determination and also gain some leadership that he has learned from Thiago Silva. And the same thing applies to player traits. That is the second thing that can be influenced through mentoring. Thiago Silva here, as the leader of the group, has the player trait, tries to play way out of trouble. And if you went forward a year or so, there's a chance that that might pass on to some other players, maybe Baddy Ashil, maybe Lewis Hall here. Now with player traits, this is the only real place where player position comes into place. So if you've got Thiago Silva and Baddy Ashil and Lewis Hall, they all play centre-back. So centre-back traits could pass on to Baddy Ashil and Lewis Hall. Whereas if we had Thiago Silva mentoring a striker, you're not going to see those traits pass over because they don't really match up. So position only seems to matter really when it comes down to those traits. And the third thing that can get influenced is a player's personality, which if you didn't know, is determined by hidden attributes that you can't see in the game. So we won't break it down too much. They can only be seen with the in-game editor, but a player's personality, in this case, the personality of leader from Thiago Silva will stem both from his determination, his leadership, but also his hidden attributes. You can see here, he has 20 professionalism, 17 ambition, 11 for pressure, six for controversy. And if those numbers are higher than those of a player that he's mentoring, say Lewis Hall that we spoke about earlier, there's a good chance over time that those hidden attributes will increase for Lewis Hall to make him more like Thiago Silva, which in turn might see his personality shift from balance to hopefully a better personality type. And again, I'm not going to break down every single personality. I'll put a link in the description to what makes the best personalities, but you're looking for model citizen, driven. They're the good ones that you want to pass down. Whereas something like balanced, it's not a terrible personality, but it's not the world's best and you'd like it to be better because it will help the player in their growth over time. Now, the chances of Thiago Silva passing this information on to the players in his mentoring group is determined by his influence on the group and the effects of that influence. So Thiago Silva, you can see, is having a significant effect on the rest of the group, which makes sense. He is the leader and everyone else doesn't really have much influence at all. However, when it comes from what they're learning from Thiago Silva, it seems Benoit Badiashil is getting no effect from this group. So maybe we're best to cut him out of the group but Lewis Hall and Andre Santos will get a significant effect. And over the course of a season, you will likely see something shift, even if it's just one determination for Andre Santos, one leadership. It's not going to be crazy changes plus 10 to determination. He's not going to become a leader overnight, but it can cause slow, small changes to your players that can really benefit you, particularly over the course of a long-term save. And I'll say it again, it's not going to happen for you overnight. So that's the things that it can affect. Their player traits, their personality, determination and leadership, as well as their social group that we mentioned earlier. If we had another group here, let's call it Aspilicueta, we can make him the leader of this social group. And I did mention earlier, I'll link a page down below, which will break down all of the best personalities. But if you want to know, if you click this button here, it will filter from the best personality at the top to the worst. So if you see your model citizen, model professional, professional, they are good personalities. So you can tell straight away that Aspie here will be 
a good mentor. And then if we filter by worst personality, you can see Broya, Familia Castillo. They don't really have great personalities at all. Let's try having Castillo there learning from Asper Laqueta. We'll also try Trevor Shalaba. And just as a side note, I'm also going to put a Bamiang in here just to show you the kind of effects that this may have on the mentoring group. Now, Aubameyang obviously is 33. He's not really going to get mentored by Aspilicueta, but you'll see when you have a few older players here, there's no one that's really 21 or younger, which is usually where the mentoring seems to be most effective. And instead of having light influence on the group, you can see some of them, like Trevor Shalaba and Aubameyang here, are actually having an impact on the rest of the group. So there's a chance that instead of receiving some of the attributes from Aspilicueta here, we might see Castillo actually being mentored by Aubameyang within this group and taking some things from him, which might not be what we want, it might be no offense to Aubameyang of course but maybe there are some hidden attributes there that we may not want Castillo to have in this case though it looks like nobody's got any effect from this group probably because these players are a little bit too old now but let's take out Thiago Silva and Aubameyang and we're now going to add a second mentor to this group just to show you if it can have any kind of effect we will add let's say Madueke into this group here you'll see that both of these guys have got significant impact on the group but when a player just doesn't want to have an effect from a mentoring group he just won't have one and in this case you can see it nobody is getting any effect from this group so it's not really worth doing so we've broken down mentoring, we've explained how it works, we've explained the possible benefits, but also I mentioned earlier there can be negatives. And that would happen in the case of, let's say here, we had an 18-year-old player who had a model citizen personality already, or a driven personality. He was just breaking into the team, he had no influence on the group yet, but you put him with a team leader who is possibly a bad team leader for your side in terms of personality. Let's say you've got a guy that's been at the club for 10 years, he is a team leader, but he actually has freedom determination, barely any leadership, and he's got terrible attributes and terrible traits. If you put the model citizen with that player, you'd actually see over time some negative effects to that younger player from learning from the older player. And it does make sense if you have an impressionable young player and put them with someone who's got a good head on their shoulders, they'll learn more from them. And if they have a bad influence on them, they'll obviously learn from that also. And that also applies to player traits. We spoke about player traits being able to be passed on from Thiago Silva to his younger players and to help them them with their game. But in the same vein as that, if you have a poor mentor with bad player traits, you can also see those traits being passed on to younger players. It's not just the good traits that they'll pick up. So make sure when you are choosing a mentor, you take note of their player traits. And if you don't like them, then don't have them as a mentor. I had this myself in my Aberdeen save, which you can find linked in the description down below if you want to watch that. And as a side note, we also have some rebuilds on that channel and some Wonder Kid videos that you might want to check out. And I greatly appreciate it if you would come over to my channel down below low. But yes, we had Darnell Fisher mentoring a young right back. What I didn't notice is he had the trait of diving into tackles and over time this actually went on to the player he was mentoring and now he has the same trait. It's not one that I wanted and it's caused an issue in terms of red cards, yellow cards and diving in when they don't need to. So make sure if there's some negative traits or maybe even just traits that don't fit with your style that you don't want to be passed down to these mentored players, then don't pick that player as a mentor because there's a good chance those traits will get passed on for better or for worse. Now that you know how mentoring can go wrong and how to set up the best mentoring groups, you know pretty much all you need to to get started with mentoring as long as if you go to your staff responsibilities to training and you have this button ticked here, you will get the training emails about mentoring. You'll learn of any positive effects your players are receiving, negative effects, or if you hear nothing at all, don't worry too much about it. Just kind of leave them mentoring groups ticking along in the background. Not every effect will be reported straight to you and it's not always guaranteed that you will get an effect within one season. It might take two or three years. You might get nothing at all. But having mentoring set up is just an extra bonus you can have to help your players. So don't just trust the assistant to assign mentors. Customize your mentoring groups. Keep them the way that you want to. So take note of a personality, the player's social groups, their estimated influence, and their estimated effects. Take a note of their player traits and their attributes. You don't want a player with 14 determination being mentored by someone with 12 determination if anything that's going to have a negative effect on the player and with that being said you know everything that you need to so good luck in your mentoring in fm23 and let me know if you have any questions down below but most of all have a great day and i'll see you next time thank you and goodbye